Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today we are going to go over the release notes for the version 55 quest build that brings you some features that you are going to enjoy hearing. Before we get started, the final announcement to let you guys know that there is a couple days left on the Quest 3 giveaway to celebrate the announcement of Arashi's Castle of Sin. So I will link that down below in the description so you can enter and try to win one of five Quest 3 headsets. So that's enough chin wagging. Let's get started. So the first thing here is the Quest performance improvements. This was announced with the Quest 3 drop that the Quest 2 and the Pro was going to get a hefty improvement with its performance. Some may remember that this was not previously possible unless you were using something like the Quest Game Optimizer that was able to remove the restriction of the performance due to the heating problems of the Quest 2. So Meta have now said that they are continuing to move VR forward by pushing the boundaries of what the Quest Pro and the Quest 2 is capable of. With version 55, they are enabling higher clock speed for the CPU and the GPU for both devices but of course we're going to see more improvements on the Quest 2 because the Pro had better heat dissipation therefore they could utilize the chip better. It's going to give you smoother gameplay and more responsive UIs. And those improvements are up to a 26% increase in CPU speed for the Pro and the Quest 2 with a 19% increase of the GPU for the Quest 2 and 11% increase of the GPU for the Quest Pro. As I said, this should result in smoother gameplay, potentially higher resolution output as well, but I don't imagine this is going to be an absolute game changer, but a more responsive system, something that's more reliable, that additional headroom so you can record your gameplay is going to be more than welcome. Next is an additional security feature. If you have people in your house household that like to use your headset or take it without being asked. They are adding a passcode, which previously we did have a pattern where you had to draw shapes, very Android, to unlock the headset. Now you are able to use a passcode, which has to be between four and 12 characters. You can enable this within the security tab of your headset. They've said that they're adding the ability to use a passcode pattern to unlock your device. As I just said, four to 12 characters, and you can also enter saved passwords and more. The next feature is the Facebook Messenger app. This is finally being added so you can send messages. And one of my favorite, favorite things about this is that you can make audio calls. That is something I've wanted for ages. So when you're lost in VR, you don't have to leave your virtual reality experience, take off the headset, find your phone and call someone. You can do that inside the headset. So they said they're bringing the Messenger app, including messaging and audio calls to VR, so you can hang out with those who matter most, regardless of which device they use. Although this is a small update, adding that ability where you don't have to interrupt your experience and you can still contact the outside world is amazing. But now this one, stalker mode as I'm calling it is being activated. It's not called that. It effectively is an online indicator so people can see a green circle next to your name in the people's tab so they know whether you are online or not. I do recommend changing that. The philosophy should be that you're always offline until you want to be online, not the other way around. Next, they're going to have a redesign of the Explorer application. They're going to allow for new layout formats, such as when you're watching Reels, you can enjoy that in a real format. Not real, as in a real. Showcase accessory options for easy activation, feature Horizon World destinations, so you can just jump straight in, and media content, such as Peacock, Pluto, and YouTube. Meh, I don't use Explore much, to be honest. Do you? Let me know if you do. This is going to be a feature that is gradually rolled out. It's on a rolling basis. So some of you may get this, some of you may not. It's all about getting feedback and minimizing the damage if something terrible goes wrong. A fantastic addition, but also annoying because you will have to link your Facebook account is the ability to live stream. If you've linked your Facebook account to your Meta account, you can live stream directly to Facebook. That's a pretty cool feature because there is huge, amazing communities on Facebook going to make this much more seamless to share content, live stream new titles. And I know creators will like this who use Facebook as a medium as well. So under the camera tab where you normally record, you'll see a live option. Here, you can set up your Facebook live stream. There's also eye tracking improvements now. Funny that after we saw Apple's amazing eye tracking, if you've got the Quest Pro, there is an update to improve the accuracy of your eye tracking, giving you the ability to track things like winking and expressions much better. Does this mean there's going to be an improvement on dynamic foveated rendering as well? I hope so but it does sound like a quality of life improvement. They should implement the gaze and hand tracking combination feature like we saw Apple do. Or are they already doing that? I don't remember that ever happening. 
Are they doing that? If you know, comment down below, but I don't remember that being a thing. There's also browser multi-touch support. Multi-touch support is more than a teenage dream. It is a feature of the Quest browser now, meaning you can use the touch controllers or your hand to control the browser and features within it, such as zooming in and out of maps or clicking HTML buttons. Because I always need maps when I'm in VR, don't I? It might be handy when AR is a thing, for sure. Handy. See what I did there. And finally, we have two new home environments. Well, two, but one with a caveat. The first is Futurescape. You may have seen this in the Meta Gaming Showcase. They claim they're going for futurism and tranquility of nature. Oh. Do you feel calm? The next one is the Great Sand Sea, a large, wide home space environment where you can only access it, though, if you've pre-ordered Asgard's Wrath to the cheeky buggers. So is it a update or is it a free home environment with a pre-order, like a pre-order bonus? It's not really part of the update. I don't think it belongs on this list. Why is that in the release notes? I'm trying to pack it out a bit, aren't they? <laughs> so there are all the updates I'm aware of, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. That is the version 55 update. Some pretty decent stuff in there. It's been a while, I feel, since we've had an update where I can leave and think, I actually like that. There's some stuff there that I would actually genuinely use rather than being a bit deflated. Can we have an insane? Can we have an epic? This is probably one of those that is deserving of it thanks to the power boost the audio calling and some of these other features as well so please subscribe join the quest for your giveaway hopefully i'll see you next time happy gaming guys good day